हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू ए न्यू वीडियो ऑफ सुनंद दास ट्यूटोरियल सो इट इज द पार्ट टू वीडियो ऑफ योर चैप्टर फाइव दैट इज मॉलिकुलर बेसिस ऑफ इनहेरिटेंस टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द आर एन यू वर्ल्ड सो फ्रॉम द फॉरगोइंग डिस्कशन एन इमीडिएट क्वेश्चन बिकम एविडेंट दैट व्हिच इज द फर्स्ट जेनेटिक मेटेरियल इट्स एल बी डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल इन द चैप्टर ऑफ केमिकल इवोल्यूशन बट ब्रीफली वी सेल हाईलाइट सम फैक्ट्स and point rna was the first genetic material and there is now enough evidence to suggest that essential life processes such as metabolism translation splicing evolved around rna rna used to act as a genetic material as well as catalyst catalyst there are some important biochemical reaction in living system that are catalyzed by rna catalyst not by protein enzymes but rna being a catalyst was reactive and hence unstable therefore dna has evolved from rna with chemical modification that make it more stable dna being double stranded and having complementary strand further resist changes by evolving a process of repair then replication while processing the double helical structure of dna watson and crick had immediately proposed a scheme of replication of dna to quote their original statement that is as follows it has not escaped our notice that specific pairing we have postulated immediately suggest a possible copying mechanism for the genetic material this uh, statement was given by watson and crick in 1953 the scheme suggested that two strands would separate and act as a template for synthesis of new complementary strand after the complete completion of replication each dna molecule would have one parental and newly synthesized dna strand suppose it is a parental strand a newly formed strand immediately appeared on the existing parental strand this scheme was termed as semi conservative dna replication the experimental proof it was now proven that dna replicates semi conservatively it was shown first in escherichia coli and subsequently in higher organisms such as plants and human cell matthew messelson and franklin stahl performed the following experiment in 1958 so what he did they grow they grew e coli or escherichia coli in a medium containing nh4 cl where the nitrogen or n is heavy isotope of a nitrogen that is n15 as the only nitrogen source for many generation as a result n15 was incorporated into newly synthesized dna as well as other nitrogen containing compounds this heavy dna molecule could be distinguished from the normal dna by centrifugation in a cesium chloride density gradient and please note that n15 is not a radioactive isotope and it can be separated from n14 only based on den- uh, densities so then they transfer the cell medium with normal nh4 cl where n is having 14 n14 is used in the medium and took the sample at various definite time intervals as the cell multiplied and extracted the dna that remained as double stranded helix various samples were separated independently on cgl uh, chloride uh, cesium chloride gradient to measure the densities of dna so then uh, thus the dna was extracted from the culture one generation after the transfer from na n15 to n14 medium that is up to 20 minutes because e coli divides in 20 minutes that e coli had a hybrid or immediate density or intermediate density dna extracted from culture after another generation was composed of equal amount of this hybrid dna and of light dna if e coli was allowed to grow for 80 minutes then what would be the proportion of light and hybrid densities dna molecule very similar experiments involved use of radioactive thymine to detect distribution of newly synthesized dna in the chromosome as performed in vicia faba by teller and colleague in 1958 the experiments proved that dna in chromosome also replicate semi conservatively 
then the machinery and the enzymes the main machinery is dna dependent dna polymerase since it use a dna template to catalyze the polymerization of polymerization of deoxynucleotides these enzymes are highly efficient enzyme as they have to catalyze polymerization of a large number of nucleotides in a very short time e coli that has only 4.6 into 10 to the power 6 base pairs as compared to human whose diploid content is 6.6 into 10 to the power 9 base pair complete the process of replication in 18 minutes that means the average rate of polymerization had to be approximately 2000 base pair per second not only do this polymerase have to be fast but they also have to catalyze the reaction with a high degree of accuracy any mistake during a replication would result into mutation so deoxyribonucleotide triphosphates triphosphates serve dual purpose in addition to acting as substrate they provide energy for polymerization reaction the two termi terminal phosphate in a deoxynucleoside uh, triphosphate are high energy phosphates same in case of atp in addition to DNA dependent DNA polymerase, many additional enzymes are required to complete the process of replication with high degree of accuracy. For long DNA molecules, since two strands of DNA cannot be separated in its entire length due to very high energy requirement, the replication occurs within small opening of DNA helix. They open to form a replication fork. The DNA dependent DNA polymerase catalyzes the polymerization only in the direction of 5 dash to 3 dash. It is a very very important point. This creates some additional complications to the replication part. Consequently, on one strand, the template polarity 3 dash to 5 dash, the replication is continuous because on 3 dash to 5 dash template, DNA polymerization occurs in 5 dash to 3 dash position and it is very very normal the replication is continuous while on the other where the template is from 5 dash to 3 dash and dna will be synthesized in a 3 dash to 5 dash position that strand is discontinuous and this discontinuously synthesized fragments later joined by dna ligase the dna polymerase on uh, on their own cannot initiate the process of the replication also replication does not initiate randomly at any place in dna therefore there is a definite region in e coli where dna replication originates such origination of re re origination of replication is known as origin of replication it is because of the requirement of origin of replication that a piece of dna if needed to be propagated during recombinant dna procedures require a vector a vector provide origin of replication further not every detail of replication under, is understood well in eukaryotes the replication of dna takes place at s phase of cell cycle the replication of dna and cell division cycle should be highly coordinated a failure in cell division after dna replication results in a polyploidy you will learn um, you will learn the detailed nature of origin and the processes occurring in this site in higher class so it is the overall structure of this replication fork and one strand uh, which is uh, which is synthesized in a 3 dash to 5 dash parental strand template is continuously synthesized but the strand which is synthesized on 3 dash to 5 dash parental strand template it occur in a discontinuous manner and this strand is known as the lagging strand and this is the leading strand and these fragments are known as the okazaki fragment at the end of replication it will join these fragments will join by the help of the enzyme dna ligase then transcription the process of copying of genetic information from one strand to DNA to RNA Thomas transcription the process of genetic information from one strand of DNA to RNA is called as transcription it is the first step of your protein synthesis transcription is the first step of your protein synthesis where the 
mRNA strands or messenger RNA strand is formed from the DNA. Here also the principle of complementarity govern the process of transcription except adenosine complements now form the base pair with uracil instead of thiamine. See generally adenine pairs with thiamine but where the DNA forms a new mRNA there the adenine form a uracil against it instead of thiamine because mRNA lack thiamine however unlike this process unlike the process of replication which once set in the total DNA of organism gets duplicated transcription in transcription only segment of DNA and only one strand is copied into RNA because RNA is single stranded this necessitates the defining the boundaries that would de demarcate the region and strand of the DNA that would be transcribed why both strands are not copied during transcription has has the simple answer if both strands act as template they would code a rna molecule with different sequence and in turn if code for protein the sequence of amino acid in the proteins would be different hence one segment of dna would be coding for two different protein and this would be complicate the genetic information transfer machinery Secondly, the two RNA molecules, if produced simultaneously, would be complementary to each other, hence would be form a double-stranded DNA. This would prevent the RNA from, from being translated into protein and exercise of uh, transcription would become for, uh, futile one. Then transcription unit. The transcription unit in a DNA is primarily by three regions, a promoter, a structural gene and a terminator a promoter region a structural gene and a terminator then there uh, there is a converse convention in defining two strands of dna in a structural gene of transcription unit since two strands have opposite polarity and the dna dependent rna polymerase also catalyze the polymerization polymerization in one direction that is 5 days to 3 days direction the strand that has the polarity 3 days to 5 days act as a template and also refer to as template strand. The other strand which has the polarity 5 days to 3 days and the sequence same as RNA is displaced during transcription. Strangely this strand which do not code for anything refer to as coding strand. So when this is the coding strand and this is the template strand because uh, the temp on that template strand new mrna will be formed which is exactly similar to the coding strand so it is the coding strand and the blue one is the template strand the promoter and terminator flank the structural gene Pro here is the promoter then it is the structural gene and here it is the terminator the promoter is said to be located towards 5 days end or upstream of a structural gene so towards the 5 days end towards the 5 days end it is the upstream of structural gene the reference is made with respect to polarity of coding strand it is the dna sequence that provide binding site of rna polymerase it is present <coughs> presence of a promoter in a transcription unit also defines the template and coding strand by switching its position with terminator the terminator is located towards the 3 dash end of the coding strand. So, it is the downstream and it is the upstream. So, uh, then the transcription unit and the gene. A gene is defined as the functional unit of inheritance. Though there is no ambiguity that genes are located on a DNA, it is difficult to literally define a gene in terms of DNA sequence. The DNA sequence coding for tRNA or rRNA molecule also define a gene. However, by defining a cistern as segment of DNA coding for polypeptide, the structural gene in a transcription unit could be said as monocystronic, mostly in eukaryote. In eukaryote, it is monocystronic or polycystronic in case of prokaryotes and bacteria. In eukaryotes, the monocystronic structural gene have interrupted the coding sequence. The gene in eukaryote are split. The coding sequence or expressed sequence are defined as exon. 
exons are said to be those sequences that appear in mature and processed dna the exons are interrupted by introns suppose these are exons which are present in eukaryotic dna and these are introns these exons exons are coding sequence while introns are non coding sequence so after the transcription these introns or uh, introns or uh, non coding sequence are removed from the uh, functional matured mrna before translation introns or non coding sequence are removed from the mature mrna in case of eukaryotes before the process of translation then types of rna and process of transcription in bacteria there are three types of rnas mrna tRNA and rRNA all these RNAs uh, RNAs need to be synthesized a protein in a cell mRNA provide template tRNA brings amino acid and read the genetic code rRNA play structural and catalytic role during translation there is single DNA dependent RNA polymerase that catalyzes transcription of all types of RNA in bacteria RNA polymerase bind to promoter and initiate the transcription at initiation site this process is called initiation it uses nucleoside trans triphosphates as substrate and polymerize a template dependent fashion following the rule of complementarity if somehow it also facilitates opening of helix and continuous elongation only short stretch of rnas remain bound to the enzyme once polymerase reaches the terminal region the na nascent rna falls off so also rna polymerase this results in the termination of transcription an intriguing question is that how the rna polymerase able to catalyze all three steps which is initiation elongation and termination transcription is step is divided into three steps one is initiation second elongation third termination rna polymerase is only capable of catalyzing the process of elongation it associates transiently with initiation factor that is sigma and termination factor that is rho to initiate and terminate the transcription respectively association with this factor alter specificity of rna polymerase to either initiate or terminate in bacteria since dna do, does not require any processing to become active transcription and translation takes place in same compartment that is in cytosol in eukaryotes there are at least 3 rna polymerase in nucleus there are a clear cut division of labor rna polymerase 1 transcribe the rrnas then uh, rrnas that is 28s then 18s and 5.8s where rna polymerase 2 is responsible for transcription of trna and 5s rna rrna then and snrna that is small nuclear rnas RNA polymerase 2 transcribes precursor of mRNA the heterogeneous nuclear RNA the second complexity is that primary transcript contain both exon and intron the newly formed mRNA in the process of transcription in case of your eukaryotes is heterogeneous nuclear RNA which contains both introns and exons so by the process of splicing introns are removed and exons are joined so this heterogeneous nuclear rna undergoes additional processing called capping and telling in capping unusual nucleotide that is methyl guanosine triphosphate is added to the 5 dash end of heterogeneous nuclear rna in telling adenylate residue are added to 3 dash end it is fully processed hnrna now called mrna that is transported out of the nucleus for translation the significance of such complexities is now beginning to be understood the splitting gene arrangement represent probably an ancient feature of the genome the presence of introns is reminiscent of antiquity and the process of splicing represents the dominance of rna world 
in recent times the understanding of rna and rna dependent processes in living systems have assumed more importance then what is genetic code during replication and transcription nucleic acids was copied from other nucleic acid hence these processes are easy to conceptualize on the basis of complementarity the process of translation requires transfer of genetic information from a polymer of nucleotide to synthesize a polymer of amino acid neither does any complex complementarity exist between nucleotide and amino acids nor could any be drawn theoretically there existed ample evidences through the support of notion that a change in nucleic acid or genetic material were responsible for change in amino acids in protein this led to proposition of a genetic code that could direct the sequence of amino acid during synthesis of protein if determining the biochemical nature of genetic material the structure of dna was very exciting the proposition and deciphering the genetic code were most challenging if in a very true sense it required involvement of scientists from every several discipline physicist organic chemist genetist it was george gamow a physicist who argued that since there are only four bases if they have to code for 20 amino acid the code should be constitute a combination of bases he suggested that in order to code for all 20 amino acid the code should be made up of three nucleotides this is, this was a very bold proposition because a permutation combination of 4 is to 4 is to 3 that is 4 into 4 into 4 sorry 4 to the power 3 4 into 4 into 3 4 into 4 into 4 4 to the power 3 would generate 64 codons generating many more codons than required providing proof that codons were triplet was a more daunting task chemical method developed by horgovind khorana was instrumental in synthesizing rna molecule with uh, defined combinations of bases marshall nirenberg cell free system of protein synthesis finally helped the code to be deciphered severo oka enzyme was very helpful in polymerizing rna with with uh, defined sequence in a template depend independent manner finally checker board for genetic code was prepared which is given in table 5.1 so it is the overall codons for various amino acids uh, so this checker board phenylalanine serine tyrosine cysteine so these are the genetic code or possible combinations so there are total 64 codons then salient features of genetic code first of all it is triplet there is no comma that means comma less then some amino acid coded by more than one codon hence the code is degenerate then uh, it is comma less so codon is read in mrna in a contiguous fashion there are no punctuations code is nearly universal from bacteria to human then uh, aug has dual function it codes for methionine and act as initiation codon then uaa uag and uga are st- stop or termination codon or stop codon then mutations and genetic code the relationship between genes of, and the dna are best understood by mutation studies you have studied about mutation and its effect in chapter 4 effect of large deletion and rearrangements in segment of dna are easy to comprehend it may results in loss and gain of gene and so a function the effect of point mutation will be explained here a classical example of point mutation is change in single base pair in the gene for beta globin chain that results in the change of amino acid residue glutamate to valine glutamate to valine this results into a disease condition known as sickle cell anemia then there are 
two types of mutation one is point mutation where a single uh, code is changed or a single nucleotide sequence is gets mutated and uh, and the function is very or the effect is very adverse it have a very adverse effect and one of the most uh, significant example of it is your sickle cell anemia where one single nucleotide change cause the uh, synthesis of uh, valine instead of glutamic acid and it results in the creation of the disease that is sickle cell anemia in the disease sickle cell anemia in the human body then another one where a set of nucleotide sequence is changed is called the frame shift mutation then trna which act as the adapter molecule uh, from a very beginning from uh, beginning of the proposition of the code it was very clear to francis crick that there there has to be a mechanism to read the code and also to link the amino acids because amino acid have no structural specialities to read code in unequally he postulated that the presence of adapter molecule that would be no one hand no one hand read the code on the other hand would bind to a specific amino acid the trna called srna or soluble rna was known before the genetic code was postulated however its role as an adapter molecule was assigned much later trna has a uh, has an anticodon loop that has bases complementary to code and it also has amino acid acceptor end to which it bind to the amino acids trna are very specific for its amino acids for initiation there is another specific trna is referred to as initiator trna there is no trnas for stop codon so in figure point figure 5.12 secondary structure of trna has been depicted that looks like a clover leaf in actual structure trna is a compact molecule which looks like inverted l inverted l then translation the process of translation which uh, which uh, mainly where the from the mrna molecule mrna molecule proteins are formed in order to sequence the amino acid are defined by the consequence the sequence of bases of mrna amino acids are joined by bond which is known as peptide bond amino acids linked with each other to form a protein and they are linked by peptide bond then formation of peptide bond required energy therefore in first phase itself amino acids are activated in the presence of atp linked to the connect trna process commonly called as charging of trna or amino acylation of trna to be more specific if two such such charged trna are bought close enough the formation of peptide bond between them would be favored energetically the presence of a catalyst would be enhance the rate of peptide bond formation so the cellular factor responsible for synthesizing protein is the ribosome ribosome consists of structural rna 80 different types of protein in its inactive its inactive state it exists as two subunit but when mrna attaches to it in the smaller subunit for the process of translation the two sides in the large subunit for subsequent amino acid to bind to and thus be close enough to each other for the formation of peptide bond so at first the mrna attach with the smaller subunit then the larger subunit attach to it ribosome also acts as catalyst for the formation of peptide bond translation unit in mrna is sequence of rna that is flanked by a start codon that is aug or methionine which codes for methionine aug which codes for methionine and stop at the stop codon and codes for polypeptide mrna has some additional sequence that are not translated and referred to as on translated region that is utr it is present both at 5 descent and 3 descent they are required for efficient translation process for initiation ribosome binds to the mrna at start codon AUG that is recognized by the initiator trna 
the ribosome proceeds to the elongation phase of protein synthesis during this stage complexes composed of amino acid linked to tRNA sequentially bind to appropriate codon in mRNA by forming complementary base pairs with tRNA anticodon ribosome moves from codon to codon along the mRNA amino acids are added one by one translated into polypeptide sequences dictated by dna and represented by mrna at the end a release factor binds to stop codon terminating the translation and releasing a complete polypeptide from the ribosome here ends the protein synthesis process then regulation of gene expression regulation of gene expression refers to a very broad term that may occur at various level considering the gene expression results in the formation of a polypeptide it can be regulated at several level in eukaryotes the regulation could be exerted at transcriptional level then processing level then transport of mrna from nucleus to cytoplasm then translational level the genes of a cell are express to perform a particular function or a set of functions for example if an enzyme called beta galactosidase is synthesized by e coli it is used to catalyze the hydrolysis of dicat disaccharide that is lactose into galactose and glucose the bacteria use them as a source of energy hence if the bacteria do not have lactose around them to be utilized for energy source they would be no longer require the synthesis of enzyme beta galactosidase because if no lactose is there so uh, why the beta galactosidase is needed because beta galactosidase act to cleave the lactose into la la galactose and glucose if lactose is absent there is no need to uh, need, need to the presence of this beta galactosidase therefore in simple term it is the metabolic physiological environmental condition that regulate expression of gene the development and differentiation of embryo into adult organism are also results of coordinated regulation of expression of several sets of genes in prokaryotes control of rate of transcriptional initiation is the predominant site for control of gene expression in a transcription unit the activity of rna polymerase at a given promoter is in turn regulated by interaction with accessory proteins which affects its ab ability to recognize start site this regulatory protein can act both positively as activator or negatively as repressor the accessibility of promoter region of prokaryotic dna is in many cases regulated by interaction of proteins with sequences termed as operators the operator region is adjacent to promoter element in most operons and in most of the cases the sequence of operator binds a repressor protein each operon operon has its specific operator and specific repressor for example lac operator is present only in lac operon and it interacts specifically with lac repressor only then the lac operon the elucidation of lac operon was also results of close association between geneticist francois jacob and biochemist jacky monod they were first to elucidate, elucidate the transcriptionally regulated system in lac operon here lac means lactose a polycystonic structural gene regulated by common promoter and regulatory genes such arrangement is very common in bacteria and referred to as operon <coughs> to name few such example lac operon trp operon ara operon his operon val operon etc lac operon consists of one regulatory gene that is i gene here to, i means inducer rather it is derived from the word inhibitor this structural gene three structural gene z y and a i gene code for repressor of lac operon z codes for beta galactosidase which primarily responsible for hydrolysis of disaccharide lactose into two monomeric unit that is galactose and glucose y gene codes for permease which increase the permeability of the cell to beta galactosidase sites then a gene encodes trans acetylase hence all the three genes gene products in lac operon are required for metabolism of lactose 
in most other operons as well the genes present in operon are needed together to function in the same or related metabolic pathway so in absence of the inducer or lactose this repressor binds to promoter site so the overall process is ceased but when uh, lactose or inducer is present in the medium the this repressor gets inactivated and this jya form a lac mrna j which codes for beta galactosidase permease and transacetylase both all these enzymes are formed when inducer lactose is present in the medium so uh, here the lactose acts as a inducer when it is present in the medium the whole operon is turned on so when lactose is present in the medium the whole lac operon is switched on and when it is absent there is no need to convert this beta galactosidase or no need to convert this lactose to uh, galactose and glucose so the whole model or whole operon is switched off so it is all about your lac operon the repressor of operon is synthesized by igin repressor protein binds to operator region to the operon prevent the rna polymerase from trans transcribing the operon in the presence of inducer such as lactose or allolactose repressor is inactivated by in inter interaction with inducer this allows the rna polymerase to access the promoter and transcription proceeds regulation of lac operon by repressor is referred to as negative regulation lac operon is under the control of positive regulation as well but it is beyond the scope of discussion at this level so when the repressor of uh, this uh, operon is synthesized from the i gene repressor protein bind to the operator region of the operon prevent the rna polymerase from transcribing the operon in case where the lactose is absent but in presence of inducer such as lactose or allolactose repressor is inactivated by interaction with the inducer this allows the rna polymerase to access the promoter and transcription proceeds so here lactose is the substrate for enzyme beta galactosidase it regulates the switch on and switch off hence termed as the inducer in absence of a preferred carbon source such as glucose if lactose is provided in the growth medium of the bacteria lactose is transported due to the cell by the action of permease remember a very low level of expression of lac operon has to be present in the cell all the time otherwise lactose cannot enter the cell lactose then induces the operon in the following manner that means the repressor of operon is synthesized repressor bind to the repressor protein bind to operator region which prevents rna polymerase from transcribing the operon in presence of an inducer repressor is inactivated by interaction with in inducer this allows rna polymerase to access the promoter and transcription proceeds so it is all about your lac operon so in my next class i will discuss the human genome project then the dna fingerprinting then what is the application and future challenges then dna fingerprinting uh, so after that this uh, whole chapter will be completed so stay tuned and uh, please like this videos and share with other friends other students teachers and uh, subscribe to my channel sunanda's tutorial thank you